Hey people of Walmart, it's your guy Nathan and I am here to bring you a three part video tutorial trilogy on how to model in Rhino 3D. Now this tutorial will be for beginners um, and it will teach you all the basic uh, tools and concepts of modeling and teach you the interface of the Rhino 3D software. So let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our Rhino 3D software. Don't look at my serial number, guys. All right, we're gonna use a small objects template uh, in inches. You can use millimeters. Um, most things are going to be small. You're gonna use a small template uh, rather than a large, and a large template would be something for like large buildings and cities and stuff like that. Okay, so this is our interface, and initially what you see here is our four viewports, which is the top, perspective, front, and right. A lot of people use both all these four ports at one time to model. I don't like to do that. I only like to use one at one time, I have one open at one time. So um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to maximize one. So we're going to use start with the top. So I'm going to double click that and now we only have one viewport. Okay. Um, so all of your view settings, your renderings are on, if you right click the tab, you're going to see here is wireframe, shaded, rendered. Those are the three renderings you're going to use on your objects that you model to see through them or just to see the shaded surface or to see the final, final rendering of the object. Let's start with I'm going to just draw a box just to show you guys, um, just to show, demonstrate the views, viewports of this software. So what we have here is a box. Um, we're going to change it to shaded. So look at the box and you'll see it has become shaded. And if we want to rotate our view around our object, we're going to use this rotate tool. You're gonna hold down the left button and just drag your mouse around. You can see it like that. You can also use this magnifying glass to zoom in and zoom out just by moving your mouse, holding the left mouse, mouse button and moving your mouse up and down. And let's change our rendering setting to rendered. And you don't see any of those NURBS uh, lines there. If we go back to wireframe, we can completely see through the object, and all three views are, or all three renderings, are important to use while you're modeling. Okay, now that we have that, let's teach you how to jump from different views. So if we type top, that'll bring us back to the top view. Um, and if we wanted to go to our left, right, or back view, or front view, we can type it up here. So if I type front, that will take us to a front view, left, back, and right. All right, now that we know how to change our viewports, let's look more at the interface. Uh, if you look on the left here, you'll see our toolbars. These are our default toolbars which contain the most commonly used tools that you will need. And then up here is another toolbar that we're not going to use that much. And then we have our standard toolbar um, up there. Now this bottom toolbar here is very important and it's very important to know and it's called our OSNAP Modeling Aid Toolbar. And if you can see, there's two of them. There's one up here where my cursor is, and then there's one down here. Um, the one up here is the OSNAP toolbar. And what it does is it helps you attach a point or pick out a point on a line or an object. So for example, if I deselect all of these, okay, and let's say I wanted to draw a line from this middle point, let me give you some perspective. From a middle, right at the middle of this box, from I wanted to attach this point starting at the middle of this box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select mid, 
and it's going to want to attach that point to any midpoint on that box. See? And that is our modeling aid. Okay? And if we wanted to attach it to the end, we can attach it to the end. See, it's on the end of a corner right there. We can do near, and it'll basically put that point near anywhere. Okay? And that's your modeling aid. And you're going to need to know how to use it, and you're going to use it a lot. Okay, so that's all for now for part one. And part two, I'm going to show you more how to use tools and what common tools you're going to need to use in order to start learning how to draw in Rhino 3D. Have fun!